Hello and welcome to Maths with Jacob. This lesson will focus on Problem Solving Part 2. This lesson is a continuation of the previous video. More examples will aim to help with further understanding. Example 1. The total number of students at a particular school was 856. If 427 of these are boys, how many girls are there? So the answer here Thinking carefully about this problem, we can see that subtraction is involved. So we have 856 minus 427, and we have all the working here. I've shown all the trading that we saw in earlier videos, so we have 429 girls. And you can pause the video at any time just to have a little look at this more carefully. Example 2. For my birthday, I was given $500 spending money, if I spent $236 on clothes and $125 on computer software, what money have I spent altogether and how much change do I have left over? So the answers for the first part, the total amount spent, you add 236 and 125, and we have a little bit of trading here, so altogether you spent $361. Now the money left over, obviously you were given $500 initially, you take away 361 and here's all the trading that we need and we have $139 left. And pause the video please at any time just to have a look at that a bit more carefully. Example 3, an inheritance of $46,356 is to be shared among four people. How much money does each person receive? If one of the people wants to buy a car for $15,000, how much more money is needed? Now for each share we just divide 46,356 by 4 because there are four people. So there's uh, an example here of some division. And we go through the steps as we saw in earlier videos and you'll find that each share is $11,589. Now the extra money needed for the car, if the car costs $15,000, so it's $15,000 minus $11,589, so we still need another $3,411 and there's all the trading in place. Example 4. A shearer can shear 250 sheep each day. If the shearer is paid $2.60 per sheep, how much does the shearer earn each day? So obviously it's multiplication here if you look at it carefully. So it's $2.60 for each of these sheep. So 250 by $2.60. Now just a little bit of clever manipulation here which we need to learn and I'm sure you probably know some of it already. If you take this zero here and you multiply $2.60 by that zero, which is really, pretend it's a, it's a 10 because that's 25 times 10. See the 250 there? That's really 25 times 10. Okay, so 25 times 10, see that? That gives you the 250. So if we multiply the $2.60 by 10, that gives us $26. So we still have to multiply by 25. So that's all I've done. So that's $25 multiplied by 10 times $2.60, which is 25 by 26. Now, this is a little bit sneaky here. What I've done, I've made this $26. I've made it $2,600 because I pretend that this is really $100. So instead of multiplying by $25, I multiply by $100. Okay, so $100 by $26 gives you $2,600. But we have to divide by 4 because 25 times 4 is 100. We've actually multiplied by a number which is 4 times larger than this number. That's why I divide by 4. So 2,600 divided by 4, if we halve it, we get 1,300. 
halve it again, we get $650. So this is the type of manipulation you need to do in your head, these mental calculations. And if you practice them enough, you'll become very, very proficient, especially when you're dealing with zeros. They're very easy to do in your head. And I'm sure your teacher will talk about this more with you.